Some say by only one thing. Money. <laughs> it's always the same with Kerry. I mean, he was a good programmer, but his interest was money. And, you know, there was no downside in switching on a one kilowatt FM transmitter, getting the station back up and running, uh, and making more money. Having moved to close down a station as popular with young people as Nova without proposals for regulation ready to go, the government had been well and truly burnt. They did very little, but sure, I mean, what do you expect of governments? They, they tend to be so out of touch with what people think of, and they tend to do very little, and the little they do, they tend to get it wrong. They're politicians. They'd run Nova off the air, the people had said, we want it back on air, Kerry put it back on air, and really the government had nowhere to go. They'd really blown it uh, in terms of illegal radio, and I think that's what gave Chris Kerry kind of a free run to do what he wanted. Radio Nova was back in business, and even the staff were astounded at Kerry's audacity. Absolutely shocked. Yeah, but gotta remember, Radio Nova, my job, the hundred quid that I earned there every week, was my only source of uh, income at the time. I had told my parents I had no job, and I'd gone home fairly crestfallen, feeling a bit sorry for, for myself after the euphoria of the close down, and was brushing myself off and dusting myself down as to where next I was going to get a job in that godforsaken country where there were no jobs, to be told to receive a phone call from somebody to say, come on in, we're back on the air. <laughs> so I was really surprised, I was really shocked. But the day Nova returned was really the beginning of the end. Unsure how long the station would last and for how long the money would flow, Chris began to think of cutting costs. But he had more immediate problems on his hands. RTE had begun to interfere with Nova's transmissions. When the jamming started, that, that was the real problem. I would say that's actually the downhill mark. This is Radio Nova on 8.46 a.m. and FM 88. And a message for our engineers at our broadcast site, will they please switch to the other link? We had a microwave link between Herbert Street, where our studios were, and uh, the Three Rock Mountain uh, transmission site. And RTE installed a similar frequency microwave link in a building, which was the RTE Museum uh, at Portobello Bridge in Rathmines. And the link was set up to fire straight at the Three Rock Mountain site. We all knew it was RTE who were jamming the signal. Not only were they upset out in Montrose, but they were doing something about it as well. But they were taking the law into their own hands. It seemed to be a, some sort of unilateral decision by people within RTE rather than RTE, and particularly people who were members of trade unions. And that's relevant because the only union members at the time in Radio Nova were members of the NUJ. So in Chris's thinking was that if I can damage members of the trade union in Nova, who in turn were damaging my station being part of this union in RTE, well maybe that will put pressure on the people in RTE to stop the jamming because their members are being hit in Radio Nova. By firing NUJ staff, Chris caused a protracted and bitter dispute with the unions, a split within the radio station and the virtual drying up of advertising revenue. Chris's behaviour throughout was, as usual, unpredictable. The NUJ used to pick it at the end of Nova Park, at the end of this long road. And before they came along, he used to go out and dump diesel on the wall so they couldn't sit on the wall and they'd smell a diesel. Chris's erratic behaviour certainly wouldn't have helped in situations where that NUJ strike was concerned. And he knew how to rub people up the, the, the wrong way. But as far as he was concerned, he was king of the castle. It was his toy, it was his machine, it was his baby. And he could do with it whatever, whatever he liked. In time, Kerry's plans would be his undoing, with Radio Nova finally dying an ignominious death in 1986, starved of advertising revenue after a long and tortuous battle with the NUJ. People started to drift away, people began to be disillusioned by the management structure, by the uh, recruitment policies, by the programming policies, etc. Q102 had arrived on air, and it just all became unfocused. There was also an inevitability that those who had helped make Nova such a success would eventually want to do it for themselves. And stations like Q102, led by Mike Hogan amongst others, proved enormously successful in the late 1980s. I think Chris had fallen out with everyone. He'd fallen out with the unions, he'd fallen out with his partners, he'd fallen out with the staff by and large. Uh, and I think in his heart of hearts he knew 
that he was never really going to get any further and that certainly no government was going to give him a radio licence. And I think the real end came uh, when the money started to run out. Then it was time for Chris to go and uh, he took off back to England. Twenty-five years on from the extraordinary events of May 1983, Radio Nova is still revered as the greatest radio station Ireland has ever seen. Ever since you left me, I should feel all alone. Many have tried, but never quite emulated its special magic. It probably doesn't mean anything to a lot of people now, but its legacy is that it, it forced change in this country where broadcasting is concerned. And this is the really key thing. Very little has changed uh, since Chris Carey innovated uh, 25 years ago. We've been tinkering with it ever since. He knew what he was doing. A lot of it was copied, but it was copied with great style and great panache. Uh, he really had a handle on what people wanted to listen to. It's something that uh, you know shaped that part of uh, our our growing up, uh, and uh, you know, and uh, that's always as long as we're around, that's going to be that's going to be his le part of his legacy. It became as good as the people that Chris Carey recruited, and I think the class of '82, '83, '81 were some of the top broadcasters of an era. Just switch on the radio any day of the week and it's there to listen to. Both in terms of professionalism and the quality of the individuals themselves. I mean, I'll be bold enough to say it changed the face of radio in Europe. And anybody now who looks back knows that, well, if we're at this stage in radio, it came from Nova. That's where it started. Hell's Kitchen US starts Wednesday at ten on three. If you love JML products, or even if you're new to JML, you can now...